It's Father's Day, and I thought, what would be better than a mostly from the garden Father's Day brunch? There they go. <laughs> Just so many in such a small space. Wow, and you know what? The basil that I have growing in complete shade looks healthy and green. And we're gonna take some of that for sure. Wow, that is gorgeous. Is that enough for four? I think so. I'm gonna get some oregano which is all blooming. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell, but these are the oregano blooms. And this is a different kind of oregano. So grab some of that. When you pull out these ee -E toy onions, you pull them out in a bunch. <laughs> oh, oh, that smells so good. Wow. Sweet potato leaves don't stay looking great for long, so use them while they are perfect. They are loaded with nutrition. My son Walker, who lives in Minnesota now, is arriving around noon-ish. And since I don't know exactly what time we're going to eat, I wanted a menu where I could prepare things in advance. So we're having squash muffins that I'm making from my Seminole squash from last year. And I'm making my quiche recipe that I have made for 30 years at least. With a slight modification, I'm using sweet potato leaves inside the quiche. And I've already harvested my burgundy beans. We're having roasted fingerling potatoes that I harvested in March. As well as, I'm gonna get one of my sons to squeeze these oranges for orange juice. First things first, let's get the oven heated for the Seminole squash. to use a little bit of my essential oil spray. I use it for everything, to clean the counters, to clean my vegetables. It's all natural. Okay. Okay, this is the part that always unnerves me a little bit because these things are so hard. So I'm going to start like that. Wow. <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> I can't believe I grew that. I'm just going to scoop out these seeds. I can't say enough about this Seminole squash because when all of my other squash got decimated by mildew last year, this really came through. Now since this is my nicest one of these, I'm going to save these seeds. I'm putting the two halves in a baking dish on parchment paper, and I'm gonna bake it until it's tender. One of my subscribers last year said, you could freeze whole cherry tomatoes. So I decided 
I was leaving on that trip and I cleared off all of my boutingans and I froze them and they've been in here since last year. So I'm going to use some of these in my quiche. I'm just going to defrost these by running some water over them. Normally you would slice cherry tomatoes for this recipe in half, but because they're so small, I'm not going to have to do that. I'm just loosely chopping the sweet potato leaves. Now I'm going to chop the onions and the peppers. This is a vegetarian quiche that uses dairy products. For 30 years or more, I have tried to eat whole foods as much as possible. So the dairy products that I use are all made from raw milk because nothing is more processed in our food supply than milk. Unfortunately, it's not available everywhere, but if you have a relationship with a farm, You may be able to acquire your own dairy products. When you don't have your own farm and you don't have your own cows, it's nice to be able to visit the farm where you get your milk. And when my boys were young, we visited Clarivale Farm and drank milk right from the cow and it's pretty amazing. My friend at Mumbai Balcony Gardener sent me this wonderful Indian spice, Ajwain. I hope I'm saying that right. And I've been looking forward to using it ever since. And you know, when you smell an herb or a spice, you can get an idea of whether it would be good in the dish that you're making. And I just smelled this, and it smells like it would be great in this dish. Now, I know the way that they do the spices in India is they put them in a hot pan and let the flavors come out. Now, this recipe traditionally calls for Swiss cheese, but you can't get Swiss cheese in raw milk, so I'm using sharp cheddar. Just in case you've never made quiche before, this is not a low-calorie meal. And because we don't eat a lot of bread, I am making a crustless quiche, because after all, we're having muffins. First, we create a base for our vegetables. Mix or beat on a low speed your mayonnaise, your flour, the milk, and the eggs. Then you add your cheese. and your vegetables. I'm going to add my leaves first so I can get them mixed in. The tomatoes, the peppers, and the onions. This is going to be intense with vegetables because I always put in about twice as many vegetables as the recipe calls for because I'm not using crust and you can fit more into the quiche pan. And I'm adding my ajwan. Turmeric is one of those amazing roots that reduces inflammation and I like to put it in almost everything. <laughs> Plus it's going to give this a nice golden color. It's starting to come together.
use some ghee to line the quiche pan. If your kids don't particularly like greens, this might be a great way to get them to eat some. I'm just going to add some Himalayan pink salt. And some cracked black pepper. Black pepper and turmeric work well together to fight inflammation. Okay, our quiche is ready to go into the oven. Let's check on the squash. Oh, that's got to be ready. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that is more than ready. As soon as I can handle that, I'll scrape out this flesh, and we'll get started on the muffins. Meanwhile, the quiche is going in. Now I'm getting the fingerling potatoes ready to roast. This is fresh rosemary from my bush, which smells amazing. Almost everybody likes roasted potatoes, which is why you see them on so many restaurant menus. Once again, salt and pepper. and extra virgin olive oil drizzled over the top. This is well done so it comes out easily. I'm using raw dairy products for the muffins. Basically, I'm using my banana bread recipe that I've used for 30 years at least and substituting the bananas for the squash. And then I'm going to also add some spices. Now, you're supposed to put in your dry ingredients separately and your wet ingredients separately, but I don't have the patience for that. So I just use one bowl and I put all the wet in, I stir it up, and then I start adding the dry stuff. So I'm gonna add one egg, a quarter of a cup of melted butter, and one teaspoon of baking soda dissolved in one tablespoon of water. And there's your liquids. Then I add three quarters of a cup of sugar. This is coconut sugar and pure cane sugar mixed together. Then I'm going to add my cinnamon, half teaspoon, nutmeg, quarter teaspoon, quarter teaspoon of allspice, and a pinch of salt. The recipe calls for two cups of pastry flour. With muffins, you don't want to over stir them. You just want to get the flour worked in. Because I had a lot of squash, I'm going to add a little more flour. That looks about the right consistency. Okay. Mm, smells good. This is a non stick muffin pan, but. I just don't always trust that, so I'm using a little ghee to coat the pan. Okay. Our quiche is done. Look at that. Wow, that looks great. Now, the top is firm, so I'm pulling it up. Mm. 
Mmm, that smells complex. By the way, I use all original wheat in my baking. This is 100% organic einkorn, which is an original wheat of the original 14 chromosomes. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm just going to steam these purple beans with some coriander and fresh herbs, fresh oregano, and a little bit of ghee. Add that turn green when you cook them. I mean, they're, they're purple. Yeah, yeah. Is this your coriander? It is. Walker wanted to know what's in the quiche, and what's in the quiche is... Well, let me just have you try it, and then you... <laughs> Always a big one. Yes, but the one is eggs, eggs, tomatoes, spinach, looks like. Yes, sort of like spinach. <laughs> a spinach-like substance. There you go. Oh, 